Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to talk about 17 February releases that I am super excited about. I have a whole list off to the side. I have the Goodreads page up. So we are going to go through these by release date and talk about some books that I definitely want to get my hands on coming up in February. So starting with books coming out February 1st, first up is Castle in Their Bones by Laura Sebastian. This is the author of the Ash Princess series, which had all kinds of mixed reviews, but this is the start of a new trilogy. And this one follows three sisters who have kind of been groomed by their mother in the art of like manipulation and things like that. So that when they eventually have to be married off, they can take power from from their marriage and I believe at the start of this they are coming to the age where they are going to be married off and we're going to be following them as they try to manipulate power out of these marriages of convenience. I, I'm really excited about this one. The premise intrigues me and I'm curious to give this author a try. Also on the first is Count Your Lucky Stars by Alexandra Bellafleur. This is the third book in the Written in the Stars series and this one follows the assistant to the hero from book two and this is a sapphic romance. I believe it is a second chance friends to lovers romance as well. So the heroine in here is the assistant to the hero from book two and she wants nothing to do with romance, nothing to do with love, but at the beginning of this book a woman from her past that she, I believe she dated in high school or had some sort of romance with in high school, moves to Seattle and she needs a place to stay. So she lets lets this woman live with her. So there is also forced proximity in here and I assume they fall in love. I'm really, really excited for this one. I love the assistant. She's super sassy and snarky in the, in the previous book. So I'm excited for her to get her own romance. And I love, I love this series. I love the writing in here. So this is one that I will definitely be reading. Next up on the first, we have This Woven Kingdom by Tahira Mafi. This is the start of another YA fantasy trilogy. It says, Clashing Empires, Forbidden Romance, and a Long-Forgotten Queen Destined to Save Her People. It's the start of a romantic trilogy based on Persian folklore. The crown parents has heard the prophecies foretelling the death of his king, but he could never have imagined that the servant girl with the strange eyes, the girl he can't put out of his mind, would one day uproot his kingdom and the world. I've been really into fantasy romance lately and this just sounds really, really good. I have heard great things about this author, but this is going to be my first book by them. And I'm just, I'm really excited to give this one a read. And then the last book on the first is Murder of Crows by Kay Ankrum. And I believe this is the start of a new series as well. I believe this is a mystery series and I've heard nothing about this book or the series at all. So I am going to read the synopsis. So it says that Lethal Lit follows Tick Taurus, a Cuban-American teen detective in her hometown of Hollow Falls. In season one of the podcast, Tig used her smarts and fearlessness to track down the infamous Lit Killer, a serial killer who staged, the mur staged his murders after death scenes from famous books. But there's no rest for the mystery-solving teen in a place like Hollow Falls, and through the Lit Killer, and even though the Lit Killer is now behind bars, his protege has suddenly disappeared. Tig, along with her friends, Max and Wynn, step in to help, but the stakes are getting higher and the hunt more deadly. Someone is willing to kill to keep the town's secrets buried. This just sounds like a really fun, like, YA detective mystery series. I have read two K. Ankrum books before. One I loved, one I thought was okay. And so I'm really excited to give something else from them a read. So their writing is stunning. So I'm really, I'm really interested in this one. It's definitely one that I'm going to have on my radar. I only have one book for February 8th, and that is Not the Witchy Wed by April Asher. I have already read this one. This is a paranormal rom-com, which is a really fun twist on paranormal. It is an adult romance, and you are following a witch who has never manifested any powers and she has a fake relationship with a man from her past who is a werewolf shifter and they are navigating the 
paranormal politics all while battling feelings, as well as some possible magic conundrums. It's a really fun rom-com. It's funny and quirky and a different take on paranormal creatures. Now on to the 15th, we have The Perfect Equation by Elizabeth Everett. This is the follow-up to A Lady's Formula for Love, and in this one we are following one of the other women that is part of this like women scientist organization, and she is a mathematician, and while she is working to submit to this mathematics competition, she is also tasked with taking care of the society, and she needs help, so she is given help in the form of a Viscount who is going to help protect the protect the scientists, and the two of them have a begrudging enemies to lovers romance. I am a sucker for anything that is women in STEM, and if you said it in Victorian London, I'm completely sold, so I'm really excited for this one. After that, I have An Impossible Imposter, which is book seven in the Veronica Speedwell series. This is by Deanna Rayborn, and I'm obsessed with the Veronica Speedwell series. These are standalone mysteries. They can be read as standalones. The only thing that you'll miss out on is the romance that develops across the entire series. I actually know nothing about the synopsis for this one because, honestly, I adore the series and I will read any of the books in this series. It is also set in Victorian London. It is, like I said, a mystery series with a romance in it. They are standalones. And I'm really, really excited to get to this one. Next up, I have Bright Ruined Things by Samantha Coho. This is a YA fantasy romance standalone, and I believe this one is set over a 24-hour period, and you are following this girl who goes to this magical island for an event, and on that island, spirits are disappearing, and she has to team up with a couple of other people and try to figure out what is going on with this magical island. Pretty much all you need me to get to read a book is tell me that it's set in the 1920s, tell me that it's set on a magical island, and I am here for it. Throw in some romance, and I am completely sold. I love this cover. It is very 1920s. It's blue and gold, which were my wedding colors, so I'm a sucker for that, and I'm really excited for this one. This one also says that it has very, like, atmospheric and whimsical writing, which I also really, really love, especially when you pair it with magical nature, so. Next up is A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross, which is an adult fantasy romance, and the synopsis says that it is House of Earth and Blood meets The Witch's Heart. It is a brilliant adult fantasy debut set on the magical island of Cadence, where two childhood enemies must team up to discover why girls are going missing. Again, magical island, that's all I need to know. Add in fantasy and romance. This is another book that I have not seen, like, any hype for, but I am very, very excited for this. I believe this is the start of a series, definitely one that I will be picking up. And then last but not least for the 15th is House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J. Mass. Of course, this was going to be on this list. This is the next book in the Crescent City series. I know nothing about the synopsis for this book. I don't want to know the synopsis for this book. I will be picking this up uh, on the 15th when it comes out, and I will be turning off all my social media so that I don't get spoiled. And turning it back on once I finish. So this is one that I will be reading right away on release day. And then finally, on to the 22nd, I have seven releases that I am excited for on this day. February, like I said, was is a pretty crazy release month. First up is Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake. This is an adult sapphic romance, and you are following a heroine who is running a pretty successful photography business, and she vows that she is never going to go back to her small town but her stepsister is getting married and draws her back to their small town with a big paycheck. She goes back to her small town and there she runs into a woman from her past and the two of them have an enemies to lovers opposites attract romance and I have given everything that Ashley Herring Blake writes five stars so I am really really excited for this one. I'm so excited that she's writing an adult romance, a sapphic adult romance, so very excited for this one. Next up is A Lady Tempts an Heir by Harper St. George. This is the third book in the Gilded Heiress series, and this book is following the brother of the two women from books one and two, and I believe that this is a marriage of convenience between the brother and a widowed woman that we have met before, and I'm, I'm so excited. I'm excited to see 
the brother's romance. I really liked him from the first couple books, so I'm excited that we're finally getting more of him. After that is The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. I have read both of Lucy Foley's previous books. One I really, really liked, and the other one I didn't love as much, but I am very excited for this one. This is actually the Literally Dead book club pick for March, so I will for sure be picking this one up. And the synopsis for this one says that Jess needs a fresh start. She is broke and alone, and she's just left her job under less than ideal circumstances. And her half-brother Ben didn't sound thrilled when she asked if she could crash with him for a little bit. But he didn't say no either, and surely everything will look better from Paris. Only when she shows up to find a very nice apartment, he is not there. The longer Ben stays missing, the more Jess starts to dig into her brother's situation and the more questions arise. Ben's neighbors are an eclectic bunch and not particularly friendly. Jess may have come to Paris to escape her past, but it's starting to look like Ben's future is in question. I, I'm really excited for this. This sounds kind of like a closed door mystery, like there's gonna be a really limited cast of characters, which I always love and Lucy Foley does that really, really well. Next up, we have Only a Monster by Vanessa Len, and this is another YA fantasy series. I have not read the synopsis for this one since adding this to my TBR. It says that this is the first in a planned trilogy, and it says, don't forget the rule. No one can know what you are, what we are. You must never tell anyone about monsters. Joan has just learned the truth. Her family are monsters with terrifying hidden powers. And the cute boy at work isn't just a boy, he's a legendary monster slayer who will do anything to bring her family down. Joan will have to embrace her own monstrousness if she's to save herself and her family, because in this story, she is not the hero. Next up is The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. Oh. It says, A girl travels to the spirit world to break a curse that threatens the lives of her people in this feminist YA retelling of the popular Korean legend, The Tale of Shim Cheong. Deadly storms have ravaged Mina's homeland for generations. Her people believe the sea god has cursed them, so each year a beautiful maiden is thrown into the ocean in hopes of appeasing him. So it sounds like in this there is a girl that is supposed to be the most beautiful girl in the village, and she is going to be sacrificed into the ocean, but our heroine's brother is betrothed to this girl, and so he ends up diving into the ocean as a sacrifice, and our heroine jumps in after him, and the two of them are taken away to the spirit realm. I'm really interested in this. The cover of this book is unbelievably beautiful. Next is Ecstasia by Claire Legrand, and this is a YA fantasy. It is a standalone about a girl who joins a coven to protect her village from a powerful religious cult. It says, my name is unimportant. All you must know is that today I become one of the four saints of Haven. The elders will mark me and place the red hood on my head. They will give me my true name, and with my sisters, I will stand against the evil power that lives beneath the Black Mountain, an evil that has already killed nine of our village's men. I will tell no one of the white-eyed beasts that follow me, or the faceless gray woman tall as houses, or the girl I saw kissing in the elm grove. Today I become a saint of Haven. I will rid my family of her mother's shame at last and save my people from destruction. I am not afraid are you? I absolutely love Claire Legrand's writing Sawco Girls as one of my favorite standalone fantasies ever, and I am really, really excited for this one. This cover freaks me out a little bit. It is super dark and eerie, and I'm just, I'm so excited for this. And the way that synopsis is written really intrigues me. So this is one of my most anticipated books of the year as well, so this is one that I will most definitely be reading as soon as it releases. Really and then last but not least is I'm So Not Over You by Kasoko Jackson, and this is an MM adult romance. It says, It has been months since aspiring journalist Keon has heard from his ex-boyfriend Hudson, but an urgent text has them meeting at a cafe. Maybe Hudson wants to profusely apologize for the breakup, or confess his undying love. But no, Hudson has a favor to ask. He wants Keon to pretend to be his boyfriend while his parents are in town, and Keon reluctantly agrees. I absolutely love fake dating. I'm sure they start to fake date and fall back in love. It says their fake relationship is starting to feel like it might be more than a means to an end, and both men must have fact-checked their feelings. I am a sucker for a good fake dating romance, and this one just sounds really, really cute. So those are the 17 books that are releasing in February that I am personally super excited for. Let me know if any of these are on your TBR as well. Let me know if there's any other February releases that I should add to my list, and I will catch you all in my next video. Bye!